Hey everybody. So here looking at a Dremel DigiLab 3D45 3D printer. This is actually my place to work. Um, and I actually made a discovery about these things recently that I'd like to talk about today. So one of the big issues with the Dremel DigiLab printers or 3D printers is the slicer that they supply is an outdated old version of Kira. It's known as the Dremel 3D Slicer, but again, it's based off of Kira, and it's based off a very old version of Kira. Now, you can use a newer version of Kira with a Dremel 3D printer plug-in, but I found that it's kind of buggy. You have to uh, manually set some parameters, such as the minimum speed. If you have it set to zero, which is the default by the plug-in, um, Kira will not slice, it will throw an error message. And another issue I found with Kira is it's just not the greatest with supports. Um, upstairs we have a whole fleet of Flash Forge Adventure 3 V2 3D printers. So I'm very familiar with Flash Print, which is the bundled software that comes with those for slicing objects to print. Now, of course, the DigiLab, you can also use um, the Prusa Slicer, among others. And the DigiLab 3D printer, one of the features that it, that it has is the ability to interpret G-code from multiple slicers. Um, for example, it can use .g, .g code, and of course, um, .g3 DRM. That's one, I think that's a proprietary... Uh, format that this thing uses, but it can, of course, again, interpret .g and .g code as well. So I got to thinking, could it be possible to slice an object in flash print and actually print on this thing? And to my surprise, yes, you can. So here we have flash print installed on my laptop here, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, the thing you have to do is you have to select Dreamer NX as the device. Now what's funny is the Dremel DigiLab 3D20 is apparently just a rebadged Flash Forge Dreamer NX. So we're working with the 3D45 here. So we're going to insert this flash drive because we're going to use a USB flash drive to copy our G-code over. So I have downloaded 3D Benchy. It's a very popular um, model that is to test 3D printers. And let's go ahead and drop that in here. And you can see there is our 3D Benchy. And of course, a little awkward when you're using a uh, laptop trackpad. But there it is. So we're going to do this as is. Now, one thing I was talking about earlier was the supports. Now, um, the whole idea of 3D Benchy is to test the 3D printer's ability to print this object without any aids of supports and stuff like that. But as I was saying earlier, supports was an issue with Kira. And um, flash print just happens to do supports really well. Um, you can, of course, do um, pillar or tree. So, for example, we'll do auto supports. And you can see how it's, that's how it does the supports. Now you can do clear supports. And let's say, again, that's tree. But what's interesting is flash print you can manually add supports which I, th I think is pretty neat because there are some files or some models out there that are quite complicated and really do need the proper supports to print properly and also um, make post-processing a little easier. We have a bearing model here that um, is very difficult to 3D print and 
If you don't have the supports just right, it will fail. But anyways, we're gonna clear supports here. I did want to I did want to touch on the supports a little bit. We're going to start slicing, and I should note that the Dremel DigiLab 3D45 by default it stores the information for the filament type on board and ignores what is in your G-code. Now I do believe you can override that in the settings on the menu, but we're going to assume that it is overriding the settings of the G-code and it's going to use what it has on board. So we're not going to worry too much about this right here. But of course, if you um, had it set to not override, you would need to configure these um, parameters. So the Hatchbox filament runs at 210, and that's what we have programmed here. Yes, we are using a third-party filament on this thing, which you can actually do. Let's make sure that wrath is not enabled, and it's not. So let's go ahead and slice. Now we can do a slice preview. And it's estimating one hour and 18 minutes to complete. Now I should note, um, an important thing here is the Dremel DigiLab 3045, when you go to um, load this code, it's not going to be able to tell you how long it's going to take to complete. It will say not sure, as you'll see in a moment. But from my findings, it's relatively close, the time it takes to actually complete the model. So, I should note that you cannot um, use flash print to send this over network to your Dremel DigiLab 3D45. You're going to have to use a flash drive. So, we're going to have to choose this option here to save the local. And we'll save it to our flash drive. And you need to make sure you change from .gx to .g, or .g code. And we'll select save. So now the file is saved on our flash drive. Let's go ahead and remove the flash drive and insert it into the 3D printer. Okay. Let's go ahead and insert our flash drive here. And we'll tap build. We'll select our flash drive. And you can see there is 3D Benchy. So we'll select 3D Benchy. And you can see right there it says not sure. So you can see that is using its onboard settings for the filament that we have in there, which is PLA, 210 degrees C for the nozzle. And we have it set to 50 degrees C for the platform. So we'll go ahead and tap build. And it's going to copy the file over and get started. It's going to remove our flash drive. So this is going to preheat. And here is the printer doing its leveling check. Okay, it is preheated and it's about, about to start printing. And I should note that um, it literally does not tell you how much time it will take to complete. It will only show how much time has elapsed. And you can see this graph will slowly work its way around. So the reason why it cannot tell you the exact um, time is it really just does not know because it's having to sort of interpret um, code from a different slicer than what it's used to. But we'll give it a few moments and we'll start to see some layers show up here. Okay, we are seven minutes in and you can see our 3D Benchy is starting to come together. So we are currently 30 minutes into our 3D Benchy and this is how things are looking so far. So 
With everything being said, let's go ahead and wrap up this video with a look at the completed Benchy. So here's the Benchy. And you can see I'd say for the most part it turned out pretty decent. Now the bottom you can't really make out the logo because this thing it um I think like the first or second layer didn't really print because I think the nozzle was so close to the base so that would probably be adjusted. But I mean otherwise not too bad. So let's get a closer look at it here. So here's a closer look at the Benchy. But uh, there you have it. So that is a look at this 3D Benchy. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we can know if I new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cubed Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.